I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, with episode 21 of Ask Dave. I'm here to answer your questions about ham radio, with particular emphasis on those of interest to those new to the hobby. Today's video is based on a question from Andrew, N6REW, who asks about waterfall displays and how they're used. Andrew, thanks for your question. First, let's look at something more basic, the real-time spectrum. We've talked in many videos about looking at radio signals in the frequency domain. We represent lower frequencies on the left-hand side and higher frequencies on the right-hand side. For example, you can represent the entire 20-meter ham band as going from 14.0 to 14.350 megahertz. A given upper sideband signal uses about 3 kilohertz of bandwidth. So if there were a signal at 14.290 megahertz, the spectrum at any given instant might look something like this. Well, we're interested in more than just a snapshot. The world doesn't stand still. So let's see what would happen in real time. What we're looking at here is a spectral representation of part of the 20 meter phone band using the same convention as in the diagram, except that it's changing in real time, in fact, with every syllable spoken. Well, I'll say this, the band is certainly restless. Let's look at this a different way. Instead of representing higher signal strength with a graph, let's represent it as a bright spot on a line. See, down here at the bottom, so let's look at this conceptually. Let's say our spectrum snapshot looks like this. So we'll translate that into a line that has a bright spot here and here. We're going to make a conceptual leap, motivated by looking at a waterfall, in this case, one in Yankee Boy Basin. Note something, what appears in real time is the water at the top of the waterfall. Let's imagine a rubber ducky coming over the falls. It will fall down and with time float away out the bottom of the picture. Okay, let's send several rubber ducks over the top of the waterfall, each in turn. You'll see a stream of rubber ducks coming over the waterfall. The first will be toward the bottom of the picture and the newest at the top. Can we do this with our spectrum display? You bet we can. Okay, so the new lines are created at the top and then fall down. Real time is at the top, and you see it go over what looks for all the world like a waterfall. So, the further down you go, the further back in history you're looking. So, if a spectrum scope is useful for knowing what's happening on the band right now this instant, what additional information does the waterfall tell us? Well, let's look at it. This spectrum is created by an inexpensive software-defined radio called the Fifi SDR. It's available for less than $150. The software is SDR console version 2.2. The spectrum is about 50 kilohertz wide. We can see multiple SSB stations. Note that the spectrum scope is real time. But if we miss a blip, the history shows us where conversations have been taking place, and there's a good chance there might be more as time goes by. Furthermore, sometimes you can pick things off the waterfall that don't show up much on the spectrum scope. Obviously, such a display is of great use. Here's an example of picking up a DX station, OK2RZ, OK rather weak but perfectly readable. Let's listen. Now this is nice, and higher-end radios have real-time spectrum scopes. My Yesu FTDX3000 is one such radio. A firmware modification issued last year upgrades the spectrum display to also include a waterfall display, which can be very handy to find band activity. Yesu uses a different convention in that strong signals are represented as dark lines instead of bright lines. 
We're looking here at the entire 20 meter phone band and it's easy to spot where things are happening. Here's an example of a waterfall that illustrates all we've discussed. This is from the popular JT65 program called WSJTX. You see across the top the frequency relative to the frequency on the radio, in this case 14.076 megahertz. So 1000 here is 1000 hertz higher than 14.076 megahertz or 14.077 megahertz. And you see the signals falling down the waterfall. One nice feature of the WSJTX waterfall is that the time appears over here on the left. So you see the older data at the bottom. After about three minutes, the data disappears from the waterfall scope. Down at the bottom here is the spectrum scope which can be correlated to the data just appearing at the top of the waterfall. The real usefulness of the waterfall display is for digital modes. Let's take as an example the popular ham radio deluxe application called Digital Master 780. The software dispenses with the spectrogram and just uses the waterfall. Again, what's toward the bottom is the old stuff you can watch as the new stuff at the top rolls down the screen. In fact, if you click on a signal that has already finished transmitting, HRD remembers history and can tell you what was transmitted. Also, with the waterfall, it's exceptionally easy to find signals. You just click on them to see what's being transmitted. Note that other popular digital programs such as DigiPan and FL Digi also offer waterfalls. This video simply introduces the idea of the waterfall display and shows how useful it can be. You can use them right now to great advantage for HF Digital. And if you have a radio with a spectrum scope, it may also have the waterfall option. This little Fifi SDR software defined radio, cute isn't it, is what drives the SSB displays I've shown you. Our photo for today is a flower. Yes, there's nothing quite like a rose. I took these photos at the International Rose Test Garden in Portland, Oregon in 2007. It was a cloudy day, which is perfect for photographing flowers. How does a rose relate to ham radio? Well, roses have thorns as well as beauty. Ham radio has its prickly spots too and can be frustrating at times, but perseverance leads to some beautiful results. So go try those waterfall displays in your favorite digital software or on your HF radio. Play with them, get to know them, figure out how to make the best use of them. Above all, enjoy your time on the air. Please subscribe to this series so you can get notice of future videos. There's a tip jar both on my webpage and on my YouTube channel page. And you can submit questions either by adding a comment to this video or a comment on my website or by using the form at ke0og.net slash ask hyphen Dave. I get several questions a day and try to answer each one individually. I look forward to hearing from you. Until we next meet, 73.